All right, so let's begin. The frequency response and intensity. So when you check out the human ear, uh, ear rather, right? Um, there's a specific frequency of sounds that the, that the ear can, can actually de de detect, right? So the typical range that you must know is 20K, well, 20 hertz rather, to 20K, 20 kilohertz, right? So that is what we call the frequency response. So humans are, are able to um, pretty much respond to that or whenever sounds have that particular frequency, you will basically pick it up or hear it. So anything below this, right, you will not, you will not um, be able to can, um, can pick up those, 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 those frequencies of sound. If, if, if the, the sound is larger than 20K, you will not hear it, all right? Um, when you think about certain animals, right, they have, they, there are some animals that have a, 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 have a um, frequency response that is lower than 20, such as cats. Cats can really hear very, very soft sounds. Right, and also they they can also hear sounds that are very high for some some to some regard, right? So that's something that we must understand here. Now, as it pertains to our frequency response, as we get older, right, the frequency response is going to um, the upper the the the, the 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 upper limit is going to decrease, right, and also the the lower limit is going to increase. So imagine that in your prime age, like maybe um, you know, as a teenager, you can hear perfectly from 20, 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. But as you get older now, you realize that you might not be able to can hear these frequencies of sound. You probably might start hearing the frequency at probably 50K. And then now, the high frequency sound you will no longer hear those high frequency sounds. You'll probably hear about, you know, maybe 10K there about, right? So it, 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 it varies, right? So we just have to understand that the frequency um, will change. Your response to frequencies will change. So that's the reason why the, the, your, maybe your grandparents or so forth, you have to talk loud in their ears for them to hear because of the, they can't respond like one time to frequencies and all of that, all right? Take time to the page in mind. All right. Okay. Yeah. Now, as it pertains to sound, we know that our ears, right, it is, you know, it's obviously linked to sound. So that's the reason why we're talking about sound and um and, and the ear, right? The human ear. Now I'm pretty sure we have heard about sound intensities before or sound levels and all of that, right? When it comes down to sound intensity, we ought to be able to can define what sound intensity is. And sound intensity is the sound power per unit area, right? So that just speaks to how, how, how powerful the sound is. You understand? So it is really the power per unit area. That's how you find the intensity of sound. So if you say that something is very intense, then obviously it's going to have a lot of power per unit area. Now, as it pertains to the unit, if you know the unit for power and the unit for area, then you can find the unit for sound intensity, which is what per um, square meter, all right? So that's, that's, that's pretty much how we find the intensity of sound. Now, the next thing that we're going to talk about here, and I hope you guys have your notebook, you're taking notes and all that. We must know these things. And the next thing I'll be talking about here is what we call the threshold intensity of hearing. Okay. Right? Sure. The threshold intensity of hearing. Now, we'll, we'll talk about... Yes, We'll talk about the threshold intensity of hearing. That is the smallest intensity of a one kilo um, hertz sound that the human ear can detect. We must know how to define this. And we must know the value as well for threshold um, intensity of sound. So that is the smallest 
intensity of sound that the human um, ear can detect. And that intensity is what you will see right here that says it is approximately 1 times 10 to the minus 12 watts per meter um, square, right? So we must know this value. How we denote the threshold um, intensity of hearing, we use I naught. So I naught represents the intensity of um, threshold intensity of hearing. And as we said that the value is one times 10 to the minus, um, minus 12 watts per meter square. Wait. Isabel, are you still on? Or well, like Isabel, Isabel dropped off. Yeah, she dropped off. I hope you don't drop off today. <laughs> All right. Now, the next thing here that we we're talking about, so it's 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 obviously related to so all of what we're dealing with here is related to sound and obviously the human ears, right? The next thing is going to be what we call the threshold intensity of discomfort. Right? Threshold intensity of discomfort. Now the threshold intensity of discomfort is pretty much the largest intensity of sound of a one kilohertz um, sound that the human ear can detect without um, discomfort of pain, right? So that is the, the maximum intensity of sound that the ears can accumulate without causing um, pain to the ears. I don't know if you have ever um, probably turn up music in your ears to a certain degree and it starts to kind of pain you to some degree, right? Now, just, be, just below that level, before it starts to pain you, you're at the threshold intensity of discomfort. Good? Another terminology that we can refer to this as is what we call the threshold intensity of pain. Now, I want you to understand something. Sometimes in physics, you know, it, it, it can be a little, not say tricky, but sometimes um, you see the value that we call the threshold intensity of discomfort, it is the actual value of the threshold intensity of pain because really and truly you're on the edge. So if you're on the edge, then it means to say you're close enough to can cause pain, but you're also close enough to not causing pain, if you get what I mean. Say this again. You were saying something? No, sir. I was just, I was just confirming. I was saying yes, sir. Okay. Sir, I have just one question, right? Uh huh. For um, threshold of like this comfort, right? So it's like kind of on the edge between like not causing damage, but also causing damage, right? Yeah. So in a sense, like, it being like if it was still at the end of the day, because of like some sort of damage, right? Mm hmm Exactly so. Right? So so at that very level, it 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 it's it's possible for it to cause damage to the ears. You understand? But of course, you know, if you if you were to supersede that value by far, that, that threshold intensity of discomfort, then you run the risk mainly of damaging the ear. But I must say that this is conditional, right? Because it is based on the frequency. Because it's, it's based on the frequency, guys. So if the frequency is at 1 kilohertz, then it means that your threshold intensity of discomfort is going to be 1 watt per meter square. Now, if the intensity is different... I mean, not the intensity, but if the frequency is different, 
right? Then you're going to see, we're going to show you a graph where the, um, the threshold intensity of discomfort can actually be a higher value than one watts per meter square. So it, it all depends on the frequency. So that's why when we're defining it, we define it at this level to say one kilohertz, right? Because that is like the, the standardized way of looking at, at the threshold intensity of hearing and discomfort, right? When I show you the graph, you'll see what I mean because what you have to understand is that um, a person who gets older, right, their, their um, threshold intensity of, um, of hearing is going to increase. When that threshold intensity of hearing increases, right, it means that the frequency of sounds that they, that they need to hear has to be much higher frequencies of sound. Let me see if I can show you what I mean on the diagram. Hopefully, I have it here. So this is kind of like the diagram that I'm talking about, right? So with a person know, so, yes. So see the um the threshold of um, threshold intensity intensity of discomfort or pain um increases as you get older. Wouldn't that um still damage the ear? No, it it, it it doesn't have to damage it, right? Because as I said, it it, it all has to do with the frequency response. Of the person, right? Because, so, yeah, go ahead. So, so in like a sense, um, with age, the frequency of intensity and stuff it changes, right? Because like an older person will like have a different range that will damage their ears. Mm -hmm. You know how like older people sometimes have the ear hearing aids and it's like sometimes really loud. Mm -hmm. Like, is it because um? Like it's already damaged, so like it's, the skill it's not, for them has kind of like changed. I guess you could say, you could say it like that. Yeah, it, it's not say that it, it has damaged. It's just that uh, I think I think you dropped off when we were looking at the range of um, frequencies of sound that our ears can detect. Mm -hmm. So the the, so the like, uh -huh. well, like range of like an elderly person would be different than the range of like a person who's in their prime or not. Yeah. Yeah, it will be different, right? So as, as we get older, right, the range gets smaller. You understand? When I say small, I mean that you are no longer able to hear a sound that is 20 hertz, which is the, 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 the lowest, right? That is the lowest. So, so chances are that the, the, the elder person or the elderly person they are more able to hear sounds within maybe say 50 hertz they're about right as it relates to the upper limit that upper limit also decreases so our normal hearing is 20k in terms of the upper limit but now their thing is going to decrease to maybe a thousand um, kilohertz they're about so that's so that's what we we're saying there you follow me now yes sir yeah. Good. So. Uh, all right. Let me see here. Um, so I was making reference to the graph just now. Let me just go back to that graph. Right. So this right here is a typical graph that just sort of explains what is happening with. Um, I don't know how best you can see. Maybe you need to zoom in, but it looks a little bit blurry on my end. Um, but. This graph is just showing our frequency. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. Um, so I, I was talking about the the range of frequency, or you know, that 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 human ears can detect over time. And and as you can see here, with a change in um, let me see. Wow, how can I look at this now? All right. So look at this, guys. With 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 somebody who is hearing a sound at fifty hertz, right? You can see that their threshold intensity, their threshold intensity of hearing has increased. So if you're picking up a sound of 20, um, 20 hertz, not, yeah, not 20, but 50 hertz, I should say, this now becomes your threshold intensity of, 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 of hearing, right? As it pertains to... Yeah, so I was saying just now, 
if you consider somebody who let's imagine that you know the elderly their their um threshold intensity or just let's, uh, let me just say it again we know that their frequency response is it has changed which means that maybe it has shifted from 20 to about 50 right if that if that occurs then it means that their threshold um intensity of hearing is also going to going, going to change so based on this note their threshold intensity of um hearing is is sort of much lower in a sense right because typically the threshold intensity of hearing is one times ten to the minus twelve right and for this this is possibly going to be i um, mean you know, one times ten to the minus seven which is a much lower value so that threshold intensity of hearing has decreased for them similarly for that person to remember we said now that the threshold intensity of discomfort is about one watt per um per Per, per per meter meter square, as you can see on this graph here, this this threshold intensity would 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 also higher would, would get a little bit higher in, in in itself. So what we're saying here is that depending on the frequency that the person can hear, their threshold frequency um, could possibly go higher. You understand? It's 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 not necessarily easy to to, to grasp, but um, it's just a thing to show you that at different frequencies, right, the threshold frequency of intensity, um, did I say that correctly? The threshold frequency, not threshold frequency, but the threshold intensity rather. Um, of, yeah, go ahead. Mr. Douglas? Go ahead. Please. All right. So I was just saying a while ago, depend, yeah, depending on the frequency of sound that the ear is detecting both the threshold intensity of hearing and the threshold intensity of pain can vary right so it is not always set to one limit meaning that it has to do with the range of frequencies that you have i don't know if you i don't know if you got it but let me know um, yes, sir. All right. So, one other thing here that we must understand is wait, that. Wait, 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 wait. Sorry, can, can you go back to the, 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 the other slide? slide? You kind of like. You mean this one here? Yes. yes. That. Okay, thank you. All right. Now, when it comes on to um, measuring intensity level or sound levels, right? We we often um, measure it in terms of bells or decibels for the most part, right? Now, one of the reasons we do that, which you must know, is that the the decibel scale is a logarith logarithmic scale which gives you a more precise value so to speak or another way how we can look at it is to say that a log scale is more able to um what would i say uh accumulate i wouldn't say accumulate i, I don't think it's accumulate i want to use right um All right, the log scale is more sensitive to, 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 to large and small values. When you, when you consider 10 to the minus, um, minus 12, right? That is a very small value. Can we agree? Would you, would you agree that the threshold, so let's look at our threshold intensity of hearing. What is the value for the threshold intensity of hearing? Do you, do you remember the threshold intensity of hearing that we just talked about? Hello. 
Kim, are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Can you please repeat me? Is it that my internet is chipping out or what? Let me know. No, 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 no sir. It's, it's on my part. part. Yes, I was just asking a while ago, what is the value for the threshold intensity of, of hearing? Hearing or, or um, of pain? Hearing, hearing. Okay, what we can, okay, 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 what what we can detect, detect um, up to um, 20 hertz? No, 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 that is frequency. That is frequency. Intensity, remember I gave you two values just a while ago, right? I don't know if Isabel got that part, but um, as it pertains to, to what we call the threshold intensity of hearing, um, Campbell, didn't I just give you a value pertaining to that? This value that you're seeing on the screen. Uh, yes, yes, sir. That is what we call the threshold intensity of hearing. And we said that there's also what we call the threshold intensity of discomfort, which is one watt per meter square. All right? Yes. So now, when you look at the threshold intensity of hearing, right, that is a a much a very small value something with time 10 to the minus 12 that is a very small value would you agree that's a very small value yes because it's a very small value right when, when you know to 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 to, to easily you know manipulate small values we we generally use what we call the log scale to account for that, right? Because working with small values can be somewhat tedious sometimes. So to make life better for us in terms of the calculation and all of that, we are going to, instead of measuring intensity in watts per um, meter square, we're going to now measure intensity or what we call sound levels in this particular unit, what we call decibels, right? Or in, in most cases, we say bells. But, but um, for this right here that you're seeing on the screen, right? Let me see something here. Yeah. So this formula is the bells formula. Let me see if I can erase off some of these things here. Right? No, um, let me see. Give me a second. All right, let me just clear that. Yeah, so, so this formula right here is the formula that we're going to use to actually um, convert or to write our intensity in terms of, um, in terms of decibels. Not decibels, but belt. I'm going to show you what we're going to do next when we want to write it in decibels because decibels is a more um, accurate um, unit Right, rather than using bells, it's a more accurate unit. But what you must remember, at least, is that um, decibel, bells rather, is equal to log of base 10 times the ratio of the threshold intensity of pain and the threshold intensity of discomfort. My bad, my bad. Threshold intensity of pain divided by the threshold intensity of hearing, right? So, so that's that as it pertains to um, the bell scale for now. Now, let's just look at a, a, simple, um, a simple question. Nothing too hard. It says that what are the typical 
or what are typically the largest and the smallest sound in bells that can be detected comfortably by the human ear. So one of the things that we must understand or we must start out with is if we want to find the, the lowest possible value, right, in terms of bells that the human ear can, 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 can record, then what we're going to consider is that our threshold intensity of, of pain, right, is, um, let me say that again. So to so, so find the smallest value in terms of bells that the human ear can, can detect, right? You obviously have to use this formula that says log of base 10 is equal to um, um, the intensity of hearing divided by the, by the, by the threshold intensity of, 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 of hearing again. So based on this, it is telling us that the human ear can only hear um, our, our lowest possible um, value in terms of sound level that the human ear can record is zero bills, right? Which actually makes sense. So if your threshold intensity of hearing is, is zero, or is, um, let me just say that. If your threshold intensity of hearing is one times 10 to the minus 12, and you're dividing that by one times 10 to the minus 12, then obviously, right, if you were to find log of, log of base 10 times one, what is, what is log of one? Use your calculator and tell me what log of one is. Log of one. What is, what is log of one? Log of one. Zero. Zero. Exactly. Zero. Yes. So that's the reason why we get zero um, right there. All right. For the, for the, for the smallest um, sound level that, you know, we can pick up in terms of bells. It's zero. As it pertains to the, to the largest um, sound level that the, the, the human ear can pick up in terms of bells, all we go ahead and do is to use the formula and we put we we'll put the 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 the, the, um, the highest intensity of 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 sound that the heat, that the ear can pick up, which would have been um, one watts per, um, per 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 meter squared. So in essence, what we're doing is saying that to find that val that value in terms of bells is going to be log of base ten, right, times one divided by one times ten to the minus twelve. If we divide one by um, one e to the minus twelve, we get that log of base ten times one times ten to the twelve. Now, if we log that value, so log log of that number gives us twelve, right? So, so, so bills. The, 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 the largest value in terms of bell that the human ear can um, detect comfortably without causing pain is going to be um, 12 bells. But as I said before, that when we talk about bells, this is pretty much a very large value for the most part. So, so from time to time, we, 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 we generally measure um, sound level in what we call decibels, and you probably might hear about you, you probably have heard about it before. Like you know when they're describing sound levels, they say probably twelve decibels or something of that nature. I'm not sure if you have ever heard about it before, but that that's the general. Um, if you have ever looked at any musical instruments and all of that, you might see decibels on it. If you have ever looked at an amplifier before, you probably would have seen decibels on it as well. So here we are now. It says that to, to measure sound levels with greater, ac with greater precision, right, a decibel scale is used, right? And in essence, we're saying that this is what we're essentially doing. So one bell, if we know that one bell is equal to 
10 decibels, then we can do a conversion in a sense. So let's look back at it now. So the important thing that we must understand is that one bell, if one bell is equal to 10 decibels, and we can prove this, by the way. What does deci mean? Do, do we know what deci means in terms of um, powers? Do you have an idea? Sorry, sir. I had to go on. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, deci. What does deci mean? When you hear about deci, do we know what it means? Yes, sir. What, what does deci mean? Tell me. Um, it means... Like, it means 0 0.1. Oh, you mean oh, 0 0.1? That's what it means? Yeah, yeah, it means like, like the 10 to the minus 1, one okay. you know? Yeah, 10 to the minus 1, exactly. I don't know how to relate. Really yeah, I see, I see what you're saying. Right? So, remember now. So if, if deci means 10 to the minus 1, so let's check this, check this out now. So if I'm multiplying 10, right, by 10 to the minus 1 bell, wouldn't this cancel out? Are, are giving and uh, and and end up giving me one. Wouldn't I get yes, one? Sir. Yeah, I would get one because of gambling is there, right? Because in essence, whenever we have ten to the minus one, it is saying one divided by ten. Good. It doesn't the decimal points. Good. So, so at the end of the day, no. If I'm dividing 10 by 10, I get 1. So, in a sense, we, doesn't, we, we didn't change the price of rice. So, 1 bell is equal to 10 decibels. So, there's no, there's no issue with that. So, now, um, let's see here. So, if we can remember that 1 bell is equal to log of base 10 times um, times the ratio of the intensities, right? Then it means now that one decibel is going to equal to 10, right? Log of base 10. divided by the ratios because what you have to also understand in just the same breadth that we said that um, one decibel is equal to 10 I mean one bell is equal to 10 decibels uh, we are also saying is it that we're also saying that well no we're not saying that right but 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 um yeah just 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 be mindful that one decibel is equal to 10 um, log of base 10 raised, uh, times the intensity of whatever the intensity of sound is divided by the threshold intensity of hearing. Huh? So I'm not hearing no, right no, no. Now. Yes, yes, I know, I know. Sorry about that. Right? So this is a, this is an equation that we must remember as it pertains to um, finding the, the 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 intensity in decibels, right? This that formula you have to remember it. All right, this one right here. You have to remember this one. At all times, guys, the the threshold intensity of hearing is divided, right, in the denominator here. So at all times, that 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 that's a general format of the equation. And you will see it when we work a particular question. No. So if we look at this question, imagine that um, a person with a normal hearing is exposed to a sound of um, 3 kilohertz, 
right, and an intensity of and an intensity level at the ear of um, 20 decibels. It says that calculate the intensity of sound this person. Um, let's see. Let me say it again. Calculate the intensity of this sound at this ear, right? Um, so what, what 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 we want to find here? We want to find the intensity of the sound. All right, so this is going to involve a lot of a lot of, a bit of mathematics going on here. Um, so they, they told us the, the intensity of sound that the person ear can detect. All right. So what we would have to do in this case, what we want to find, we want to find how intense the sound is. So we're trying to find I. So what we're going to do here, we're going to have to incorporate some amount of mathematics going on right here. As it pertains to logs and all of that. Right. This is a rule in mathematics where it says that if you have log of A times B, you can rewrite it to say log of A plus log of B. Now, what if you have something that is being divided where you say log of A divided by B, then we can rewrite it to say log of A minus log of B. So that is what we are going to essentially um, do right here in this particular calculation so so let's let's look at it let's just expand it first so we're saying that db is equal to 10 log of base 10 times the the the, the ratio of the intensities and we want to expand it now before we can expand it Yeah, so we're trying to find I. Let me just check something. Give me a second. I think I... So log of E to the minus 12. Okay, I see what I did. So if you put in your calculator, log of E um, to the minus 12, that's going to be minus, minus 12. So minus and minus gives me plus. Yes, Campbell. Yeah. But what? Oh, you love the fruit. No, I mean the classic class, not any of it. Mm-hmm, all right. So we're using, uh, let me go back here. So this, question, this is the question I'm talking about, right? So the question wants us to find the intensity of the sound level, right, at this particular ear. So the question starts out by saying that a person with a normal hearing is exposed to sound of frequency 3 kilohertz and an intensity level at the ear of 20 decibels. It says calculate the intensity of the sound um, at, at this ear. This involves some mathematics that you have to remember. So what you're seeing right here that says log of A times B, right? From a mathematical standpoint, we can break it up using some type of addition mainly. So if you see log of A times b, you can rewrite that to say log of a plus log of b. Also, what if you have log of a divided by b? Another way how we can write that is by saying log of a minus log of b. So with this question, that's what we're going to do. So of course, we start out Of course, we start out with our formula, right? That says dB is equal to 10 log of base 10 times I divided by I naught. We want I to become the subject. So we have to transpose 
to make I become the subject. But before we can even do that, this thing is being logged. In order for us to break the log, we have to use this information right here that says log of base 10, right? I divided by I naught can be rewritten to say that log of base 10 times I minus log of base 10 times I naught. Close the bracket and we'll put the 10 on the outside. All right. Let me know what you what you understand. Or you know. Okay, so log of um, base ten, um, which is a b equals to log of base ten. You know all of that, and it can be rearranged as that right there. Mm hmm With our Yes, no, you were explaining on the decibels. So decibels equals to 10 logs of, of um, base. I don't, I don't. Base 10, base 10, base 10. Yeah. You're trying, you're trying to laugh after my, um, my, um, my, my handwriting. Like. No, sir. No, no, no sir. No, my handwriting is much, much worse. Is it right no, in a sentence? No, That's yeah. my best. No, okay? no, no, so. no, don't try to pretty it up. I realize that what you're doing, you're laughing at my handwriting, but it's okay. Huh? I, I'm not going to feel any way about no. it. <laughs> yeah, man, it's all right. I'm, I'm laughing at my smoothies. Uh -huh. so, so, yes, if I have log of i divided by i naught, couldn't I rewrite it to say log of i minus log of i naught? Huh? Log of Look back at this one, Campbell. So, one question from we're just putting like everything in a bracket now instead of putting the 10 in front of the both numerals. Yes, yes. Yes, yes, um, Isabel. So, um, so Campbell, please let me know that you get this because you know, you can see stuff like this again, where you might require to break the log. So if you're seeing log um, of A divided by B, you can then rewrite it to say log of A minus log of B, right? It's the same thing that we're doing here. If I have log of I divided by I naught, I can simply rewrite it to say log of I divided by log of I naught. And now, we know the decibel value because they gave us in the question. So that is 20. So I can go ahead and write down 20. Cool? So that's 20. Then what I'm going to do next, I'm going to just divide both sides by 10. The 10 cancel here, the 10 cancel here. So, right? So I'm left with 2 on this side. 2 is now equal to log of base 10 times i right minus log of what is my threshold frequent threshold intensity of hearing again what is that value go again go again let me hear you Um, kilohertz, um, one kilohertz, is it? You know, you know, write down the value, I'm telling you, write down in your book. You know, write it down in your book, I'll know, you know. Oh, the, um, okay, it, it, it's, it's a one point. Of oh. No, go ahead. Oh, the oh, threshold the intensity of hearing is 1 by 10 to the negative 12, to the power of negative 12. Campbell, you must know these values. So we're going to log this. When we log this, put it in your calculator. Log off that value is what? Log of
You guys don't hear me. Log up that volley is what? Log up one times ten to the minus twelve. Come on, guys. Come on. Come on. Come on. Sir. Yes. Yes. Sir. So the log of the log of one times ten um to minus twelve, right? Yeah. The log of log of that. What what you get? Um, um, my comment is saying zero. <laughs> yeah, I got zero too. You sure you put in the right thing in the calculator? Sir, log one, um, one times ten expo um, exponents are negative twelve. That's what I got. you're pressing the LOG button on your calculator, right? Yeah. LOG button. When I press it on my calculator, I just put in log of e to the minus twelve. That's why I put. That's what I put in my calculator, and I got minus. Oh, so this, so that's log, log exponent and, and then. You know, supposed to affect the price, all right? You know, supposed to affect it. So if I say um log of one e to the minus twelve. I still supposed to get minus twelve. Oh, I'm getting negative twelve. But how you couldn't get it first? Then something wrong with your calculator, then. Yeah, I got negative twelve. No, you have to put first yeah. the second of an F function to get the E. Oh uh, well, we don't know how to the calculator we wanna use, but um, you have to know how to manipulate your calculators, you know. So we're getting negative twelve. So we're saying minus minus. 12, right? Uh, so let me write this now. So 2 is equal to log of 10 i minus minus 12. When we have minus minus 12, what that, what that becomes? Positive. Positive, right? So I'm going to take that positive 12 and I'm going to bring it across the equal sign. So 2 minus 12 is now equal to log of um, base 10, right, times i. I want to find i, right? So I have to do the opposite of logging a number. The opposite of logging a number is finding the exponent, right? So this is minus 10 right here. Good? So it says that So to, to, so to find, um, so you can write this somewhere in your book. So to find i, right, we have to we have to find the anti-log, anti-log, right? The anti-log. Let me just verify what the anti-log is again. Give me a second. All right, so the anti log. Okay, yeah. So on my calculator, the anti log, you see, is the shift button of log times the, 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 the value that is on the screen, right? So so from, from my calculator, which is a Casio, anti-log of minus 10 is going to equal to i. How you find anti-log on your calculator is the opposite of logging a number. So the log button that you would have pressed to find out. Can um, you please repeat that? Huh? Can you please repeat that? You were saying what equals that. Yeah. So, so, on your calculator, the way how you found log of 
1 times 10 to the minus 12, right? If I wanted to find the anti-log, you would have to do the opposite, which is to shift the log button to get the anti-log. So try shift the button for the anti-log and put in minus 10 and tell me what you're getting. Almost there. I think one to the minus ten. To the minus how much? Ten. All right. Let me ask you something here. So look at this for me. Um, let me see if I can mm -hmm. share the audio. I don't know how best the quality might be. Uh, as a matter of fact, let me just send you the video via the um, via the chat, right? So uh, just watch this video quickly, right? And see if it makes any sense to you, all right? So take, take a little bit of three minutes to watch that video and see what happens there. Friends, today we are going to find how to find the log values and anti-log values using scientific calculator. So the procedure is very simple. So you will have different versions of your uh, scientific calculator. So I have, I have the version FX 350MS. Okay. So what will be the version? The procedure is same. So switch on the calculator. For example, I'm going to find the log value of 80. So this is nothing but uh, the natural log. So the base will be always 10. Okay. So if it's a natural log, you can uh, substitute the values of uh, log values in the calculator directly. So take this scientific calculator, and I have going to find the value of 80. So click log, then plus the value 80. So you'll get the answer directly. So the value is 1.9030899. Now I'm going to find the anti-log value. Anti-log value of 1.9030899. So I'll check whether I'm getting the value as 80. Okay. So the first is click shift and click log then substitute the value that is 1.9030899 the value is something like I'm getting is 79.999 that is equal to 80 Okay. So, if this is a natural law, you can substitute the values directly. In case, I am going to find the value of log 80 to the base 2. In this case, the procedure is different. Okay, You can't substitute the value directly. So we have a formula for that. So log x to the base y is nothing but log x by log y. So according to this formula, how can we substitute? So here x is 80 and y is 2. That is nothing but log 80 by log 
2. Now this becomes a natural log that is log 80 to the base 10 and log to the base 10. Now what you have to do is now take a calculator, substitute the values log 80 divided by log sorry log minus 6.32 similarly we can find the any numbers using this thank you for watching hope it is useful for you kindly subscribe the channel thank you again Read information and two it and two it left dunamay. You can read that and to read read what it does uh uh until uh, 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 that works. Hi guys. But you don't know how you have to find it. But you don't know, you have to go back to the procedure and read it and two it and two it to understand it and try it to figure it out. You don't know. You have to wait until we finish yourself. Alright guys, um let me know if that shed any light to you guys a while ago. Guys, talk to me now. You guys watch the video? Yes, sir. I've been saying I'll give him one minute please because I had to copy and then I'll send it to my room so I could watch it because I couldn't while we were playing it because I was hearing two different audios. Okay, sorry. Right. Yes, sir, but you see, the only thing is I have a sharp calculator and a potassium calculator, so I'm trying to kind of figure it out now, like with what I remember from the video, but... Mm -hmm. But I, I think it should be the opposite, though, of, of you logging something on your calculator, right? So whatsoever you did for logging a number, you would probably press the, the second function, right, to find the, the anti-log or the login verse. Sir, what you thought of anti-log? Say it again? Sir, what's the answer you got? Um, the answer... Oh, okay, it's supposed to be 1 times 10 to the minus um, something. Let me know what you got. Um, it's supposed to be either one times ten to the let me just do it again. I got around well I'm not sure if I'm pressing the correct stuff, but I got around two point seven by ten to the I mean negative yeah, negative two point seven by ten to the thirty. Are you putting in the negative 10? Yes. Um, 
But I might have pressed the wrong stuff on the calculator list, so that could have just supported it. Yeah, so you, you possibly have to, um, uh, what I say now, um, Wait, wait, what, what? sir? Are, 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 are you trying, trying to find the anti-log of negative 10? Is that what you're saying? Because I wasn't listening. Because I had a lot of things. Yeah, so you, you are supposed to be um, finding the anti-log of minus 10. Right? I don't know if you got the value, but let me know. So I'm going to just use this online calculator, right? Hopefully it works, I don't know. Sir, I'm still getting the same answer, because that's like... What are, you saying? what are the answers you get in? Tell me. The answer for, the, um, for negative 10? Yes. Sir, it's still 1 to, to the um, negative. To the negative what? I didn't hear you. Break up. 10, sir. Negative 10. Okay, okay. All right. It, it, let me, I'm trying to see here if that's the answer. I think my calculator is not working so well in terms of. Um. Um. By any chance, like, what kind of calculator do you have? Like, what kind of calculator do you have? Um. It's it's Yeah. yeah. Oh, because I have the short, short calculator, and I'm kind of wondering, like, what to press to get the answer. Oh, um, uh, what, what did you get? get? I got I negative 2.7. Oh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, Campbell, I think the answer, the answer, yeah. the answer should be, um, one time since the, uh, minus. Um, yeah. yeah. So I added exactly what he did in the video, really, because it, it looks really like very much the same. Mm. Let me just check something again. Give me one second here. Okay. Yeah, the thing is, my calculator have an analysis issue with it. So I wasn't seeing the values correctly. Um, but it is one times ten to the minus ten. So that would have been the intensity, right, of that particular sound. And it 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 it, it makes sense to, to to some degree because the, that 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 value of decibel is relatively low. It's close to almost close to the intensity of of hearing, right? It's a very small value. All right, let's see this question now. Um, Another question, it says that a uh, decibel meter, right, reads 130 decibels at a certain position from a jet engine, right? It says when one engine is turned on, question is, what is the sound intensity at that position, right? What would be the sound intensity at that position? So the same thing that we did a while ago, right? Now I'm going to ask you guys to go ahead and do it again, right? And see from there if, you know, we, we possibly can get the answer. So nothing much has changed from that question. It's really the same thing.
I hope you guys are working the question. Yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> oh, no, no, Cam is a little trickster sometimes, you know, like. So I have to, I have to, <laughs> I have to look out, look out for you, you know what I mean? Isabel, what about you? You get the answer now? That that fancy calculator is giving you a fight, Isabel. Yes, sir. I'm still like I was just on Google trying to figure out some like buttons and stuff. Okay. Tell me the tell me the brand calculator again. Sharp. Sharp. Okay. The advanced Is it is that programmable calculator? No, sir. I don't know why it's missing this button. Alright, so you see now. Is it is it looking like this on the screen? Yes, sir. All right, let me just look at it and tell you what you probably need to do. Um, it's taking out the while. All right. So, um, Isabel, is this exactly how it looks? Yeah. No, sir, not that. It doesn't have those buttons on the top of it, but it looks similar. All right. It's the one next to it, I think. That's a programmable calculator when you just pull up there. So this one right here? Or this one? Um, no. Like right next to it. This one. The, I think it's the five or six T S. The five the five or six T S. That's the exact model. Yeah. All right, no. All right. So look here now. The second function, right? Hit the second function. Yes. Hit log. And then put in the value. For the first one that we're looking at, put in yes, minus. Yes. Huh? Yes, sir. I understand how to do that, but I'm getting error too. You're getting error? Yes. All right, guess what you're going to do? You're going to log. Um, I right, hear what you're going to do. You're going to put the minus, minus 10 in the calculator first. Then you push, you press um, the second, and then press the log and see what comes up. So minus 10, then you press this second function, then you press the log. Uh, 
Amen. It's taking too long, man. Oh gosh, like you have program the calculator. Sir, I'm, I'm getting error two. What do you want me to do? So me, you never, you never respond yet. So me no know. I don't think you know I respond. All right, here I am now. All right, tell me something. Are you seeing D E G on the on the screen of the calculator as well? Yes, sir. Okay. Um. Ah. Uh, yeah, you have to go figure that one out. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what's going on on that side. Right. But yes, Campbell, the answer that you got is correct. Okay, great. So that's, that's what's for meter squared? 10 watts per meter squared. 10 watts per meter squared, yeah. Right. So the other part of the question is a little bit tricky in a sense. Right. They ask us to... Um, it says, what would be the sound level at that same position if two engines are turned on, each having the same intensity as the first, right? I don't know if you know how to approach that one, but when it comes on to this type of question, right, we can't, we can't say... Um, Ten times ten. We can't say ten times ten, right? That is that is a no no. What we have to do is to multiply two by ten to find the intensity, right? To find the intensity of the of the sound, right? Which is going to obviously be twenty um, watts per meter. Square, then we use the equation now to say that decibel is equal to um, 10 log of base 10, right, times the 20 divided by 1 times 10 to the minus 12. Wait, 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 wait sorry. can you go back a little bit? Yes. So, so when it comes down to finding this question, right? We can't we can't add this this the well as it pertains to the intensities. Normally, you might have thought that the intensities would have um, you'd have times it, but it's not times your times in it. You're multiplying it by two. And uh, oh, by the way, I'm, I'm, what I what I should say? Uh, let let me go back a little bit. What 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 I meant to say is that when it comes down to finding the 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 the, the, the sound level, you could not have gone ahead and say one thirty plus one thirty, right? That is that is going to be incorrect because you 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 already know the decibels in terms of um in terms of one engine. It doesn't mean that if you have two engines, you're going to hear um two hundred and sixty decibels that that would be like really really damaging to the ear right so that's not what it is what you would have to do is to consider the two intensities right of the engine so you're saying two times ten that that would be the total intensity of sound that is coming from both engines and you're going to use that information now to find out what would be the sound level of both engines combined so we can't add the intensity, the, the 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 sound level in terms of decibels together. We have to we have to take it from an in, intensity standpoint. So by way of doing this calculation here, right? Um, yes, go ahead. Can you just rejoin? 
And I hear you. I said um, you only have like three minutes and some seconds left. I think just restart it. Okay. So you don't want to go to your bed? No, so no, I want to work and finish this one so I can get it because I'll work on it. I feel like it's going to be. All right. Oh, could I finish nine three minutes still, right? So all you would do, oh, you, you would you would divide twenty by ten to the minus um uh twelve. So twenty divided by ten to the minus twelve. Right. When I do that, I get two times ten to the thirteen. And I'm going to log that. So you're going to press log. Log of 2 times 10 to the 13. When I do that, I get 13.3 um, times 10. So at the end of the day, when you're listening to that engine, right, you are actually hearing a decibel of 133.0 um, dB in terms of the decibel scale. That is one, that's 133? 133, yeah. Okay, sir. Oh, sir. Um, I have a question, but it's, it's not to do with um, this, really. Yeah, more than like it's going to be related to lab, so for the acid. Um, yes, sir. I have a question. Go ahead, please. Let me hear you. Oh, God. Um, uh, wait, I need to find it. You need to find it. Yeah, yeah, one minute and, and 30 seconds. Okay, so, so oh, I can't find it. So it has to be the resistivity lab, right? So uh -huh. um, for the for area of the fire, right? right? That's, that's what, what I'm, I'm trying, trying to figure out because I figured it out um, like uh, the resistivity. I am, um, no, you I can't realized, figure out you can't know. figure out the resistivity yet without the area. Because re um, no, 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 no. I'm, yeah. I'm, no, so I know that's, that that's how that's what I want to know. Like, well, I know that because I already know when you it, you know, on the graph and whatnot. No, All I'm, right. I don't know. So area is equal to pi r squared. You have the diameter of the wire. You can find the radius. What's, What's the diameter? It wasn't stated. Check again, man. It's posted up on the paper, man. Of course. In the result? I'll restart it. Yes, of course, in the result. I'll restart it. Give me a second to restart. All right. All right, you guys are back? Yes. Yeah, so Campbell, tell me what you have to know. Okay, finding the area. I um, linearized the equation from the gradient, but no, um, the area. 
what is the gradient? As in, in terms of, so you linearize the equation. Give me the equation again. Um, that it, okay. So the equation of straight line is y equals mx um, plus the intercept, right? And um, the res the resistivity would be um no. Okay, so that would equal to um, resistivity over area times the length plus zero. So, hold on, hold on, hold on. Give me the give me the general equation for resistance. In terms of the parameters of the wire. Give me the, give me the equation for the resistance of a wire. Okay. That would be um Resistivity times length over the cross-sectional area. So you're saying resistivity times what? Equals um that's resistance times the length times the area. All right, I'm a little bit confused. Um, say it again. Um. Can you hear me clearly now, sir? Huh? So, so that is resistivity times the length um, divided by the area. And this is equal to what? Resistance. Okay. Now, you said you have linearized the equation, right? So if, you're, if you have linearized it, then what information are we getting from from this. Okay. Okay. So, um, resistivity would um would act as the um as the y and um wait no no that's resistance and resist resistivity over the area would be x x would be the length um and plus zero. So you yeah. said to you locate two points which we'll use for the, um, the gradient, and that's what I did. And I um, for y2, y1, that's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Y2 for me is 0 0.0. Yeah, I don't have to know the point. I don't have to know the point. I just want to know that you found the gradient. Okay. Right? Yes, sir. So we're saying that gradient is equal to resistivity over length. Can we agree? Over error, rather. Can we agree on that? Yes. Yeah. So what's the next thing that we want to do? Okay, to find the resistivity now, we um, times the area with the gradient. Times the area by the gradient. So resistivity is equal to the gradient times the area. What were you saying about the area now, um, Campbell? Yeah, um, how do I find the area? How do you find the area? How do you find the area of something? Pardon, sir? How do you find the area of something? Oh, you find the area. That's what I want to know. You want to find the area of a wire. What what information do you need to find the area of a wire? So um, that would be pi times um radius. So you're telling me that when you look on the paper, you're not seeing the diameter of the wire. Says to use um. Huh? Okay, 
okay, so in the procedure, I can see here where it says it's to all add and I'm talking about procedure. Positions. Results, results. Go in the results yes, and see and see if you find the diagram. Results. Results. All I'm seeing for the results are the length of um, voltage, current, and resistance. And I had to um, find the resistance. Let me just look for myself. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm right. Now, Campbell, this is the document that I sent you, right? Yes, sir. What, what did you see right here? Oh, I... Oh. Oh. Wait, Wait sir. Let me, let me look. Let me look. Let me look. Check my document. It's real, real quick. Unless you deleted it from your document. And no one to make it seem like... How did I delete it? it? No. <laughs> Right, because. <laughs> Sir, wait, wait. <laughs> okay. okay. I, I delete it. Too. You delete it. Exactly. Right. Yes. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and, and no, you know, the arm was connected. Me never gave the value. But this is the document I sent to you, and I gave it that value there. Hey, sir, let me check it for real, real. Let me see. Like, I don't know why I keep like, looking over things. I think oh, I sent it to Isabella. It's unit two, right? Yeah. 